My name is Lee Oden. I'm the CEO of Top Rank Online Marketing. It's a Minneapolis, Minnesota-based uh, digital marketing agency. And I'm also author of a new book called Optimize, How to Attract and Engage More Customers by Integrating SEO, Social Media, and Content Marketing. And I also write a blog. I've been writing a blog for about eight years now, over a million words, um, at toprankblog.com. What is content marketing? You know, it's interesting because content marketing as a topic has become really, really popular amongst a lot of different marketing channels lately. You have folks in the B2B marketing space who've been using uh, content marketing to guide customers through the sales cycle, romancing them with white papers and case studies and that sort of thing for many, many years. You also have um, the category of content marketing called uh, custom content, where big brands have published magazines and radio shows and even TV shows. Procter & Gamble actually was the uh, originator of the modern soap opera um, in the field of content marketing. But SEO, for example, uh, as an industry has become very enamored with content simply, I think, as a reaction to Panda and Penguin updates that were recently made by Google that pay a lot more attention to identifying quality content, quality situations um, that will help deliver best answers to what it is that people are searching on. So content marketing is about the thoughtful creation of information um, that has been designed for a particular audience with a particular outcome. Uh, what content marketing is not, it's not just adding more content. And that's the way a lot of SEOs are looking at it. They're simply thinking, wow, we've got to add more robust content, infographics, videos, and this and that, just to add more to our inventory of what could rank in the search results. The reality is, though, that's a bit of a mechanical approach, and what's important is to have a meaningful approach. That's why my definition, or the definition people like Joe Paluzzi pr promote of uh, Content Marketing Institute, is that it's something that you're creating with a purpose and with an intended objective. I think one of the simplest things a small business that's resource strapped can do to take advantage of content marketing is simply to answer some questions why, you know? Why, why would you want to use content? Um, what problem are you trying to solve? And one of the follow-ups to that is getting an idea about what it is that your customers think of when they think of your company and the solutions that it offers. In other words, what is it that content can actually do for your customers to help them feel more comfortable buying from you. Um, one of the tactics you can use is simply to interview frontline employees, customer service, what are the common questions that come up, or salespeople, what are the most often occurring um, objections or things that prospects will ask, and document those things and literally turn that into an editorial plan. I mean, if all you did was to aggregate the most commonly asked questions that people who buy from you get answers to before they actually make a purchase and turn that into a schedule of blog posts, you'll be a lot, I mean, you'll, you'll be doing something that's very simple and very straightforward to do that will be meaningful not only to the people who read that content, but if you think about keywords, it'll be good for your search engine visibility that they can drive even more traffic uh, to more visitors who will find that valuable. Should every business have a blog? Uh, I'm very biased towards this. I think blogging is a very easy to use platform, publishing platform. Um, it's a social platform and it's something that if well planned out um, and engaged with and promoted can be a very, very successful asset in a marketing mix. The problem a lot of companies run into with blogging is, is that they have a person responsible for blogging and they're only talking about themselves, they're only talking about key messages of the company and that's it. Every human being is a vessel and they're only, they only contain so much original thought. Eventually they're going to run out. So it's very important that if you do initiate a blogging effort that you're also at the same time participating with communities. You're interacting with other folks that are blogging about similar topics. You participate in forums or social channels like Twitter or Pinterest, um, that you're interacting with folks in a question and answer sort of dialogue. Because if you do that, if you participate with a community, 
you will never run out of ideas to talk about. You will have a never-ending stream of things that you can write about in terms of answering questions for people or taking a stand and, and, and communicating your unique selling proposition or your unique um, position on a particular topic. So if you're busy doing lots of other things, um, what can you do to get started with blogging that's not going to take away from running your business? Well, then the first thing is to find a blogging platform. You can either go to wordpress.com um, or you can go ahead and go to a hosting company that will support the installation of WordPress on your own domain name uh, or your own hosting account. And then you can literally you know, start with that editorial plan. What is it that your customers care about? What is it that they need to become confident about your product or service? What stories can you tell them to instill confidence in your brand, in your products and services? And another thing to look at is what kind of information can you give them so that they can get more value after they become a customer? How can they get more out of the products and services that you offer? And literally make a list of topics and off you go. And you can spend a small amount of time. I like to keep anywhere from 10 to 20 blog posts in queue at any given time. So what that means is rather than sitting down for two hours in uninterrupted, which as a small business owner you know is never gonna happen, you can spend small amounts of time adding to an article. And eventually what'll happen is you've got these 500 word articles that are really well thought out, researched, linked, and have images or whatever added to them that will be really useful to people. And you didn't have to sit down for two hours to do it. You spent five minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. And once you get a queue going, you can be publishing really useful content without a huge tax on your time. And what if I suck as a writer? <laughs> if you suck as a writer, then Maybe you can get an employee to ask you questions on camera or uh, through audio. Uh, have them answer, have people, think of situations where you can actually answer questions uh, for people. I know with a lot of companies, uh, there might be a, an executive or CEO or whatever says that they're never gonna blog. So my recommendation is look, ask them questions. If you have a subject matter expert, um, you have a business leader, they're gonna have an opinion. And if you can capture that opinion, either, again, through video or through audio, then someone else can transcribe that content into a blog post, and that works pretty good. To be successful with blogging, you've got to have something to say. You have to have something interesting to say. And I recommend having, taking a stand or a position. Like, what is it that you stand for? What is it that you really want to be known for? So it's not just about promoting your products and services. It's got to involve empathy with the audience that would actually consume this content. Well, who is your audience? Is it people who buy? Sure it is. But it might also be people who will never buy from you but would refer you to somebody else. It might be other bloggers who cover the same space. It might even be the media who are looking for a subject matter expert to include a in a story in a newspaper or magazine. So have an opinion. Uh, it's really important to stand out. And with SEO, specificity is what wins the day. You know, you've got to be very, very focused. So I think those are important things um, in terms of getting started. What role do analytics play? Um, obviously, uh, low-hanging fruit for analytics is making sure you have Google Analytics. It's free, it's very robust and rich. Um, there's two things I look at in terms of getting signal or feedback. Um, from an analytical standpoint with blogs. One is, as, you, as I said, web analytics. Uh, so you can see who's visiting your site, what search phrases they're using, what are they doing when they get to the site, and that sort of thing. But the other thing you want to pay attention to is social monitoring. You want to have some kind of monitoring software. And if it can be as simple as Google Alerts, that's fine. But use something else um, like uh, TechRG SM2 or Scout Labs, um, Sprout Social, and if you have budget, something like Radiant 6. All those different services will monitor what people are talking about on the social web so you can get an idea not only of topic ideas but also what people are saying in reaction to the blog post that you've made. Because sometimes people won't link to you, they'll just mention you and, or they won't, they'll misspell your name or they'll misspell your company name or your blog name and it won't show up in your Google Alerts. So topically um, it's something that might be reviewed through monitoring and then you can go ahead and react to it. It might even inspire editorial. So I'd take a look at web. Um, to monitor KPIs like um, you know, in, engagement, uh, you know, comments, um, likes, fans, friends, followers, stuff like that, that's important.
but also web analytics in terms of the actual traffic that's been driven to your blog. Uh, and that can give you feedback in terms of what's working and what's not. When you first get started with blogging, it can seem intimidating when you look at other folks who've been blogging. I've been blogging for eight years. I've written over a million words. So um, believe me, it's been a journey. And my next eight years, if I'm still blogging eight years from now, it's still going to be a journey. And that's how I look at it. When I started blogging myself, I simply wanted to use the platform as a way to document interesting news to share with my team. And then I started writing. I was a horrible writer. I still consider myself kind of a hack writer, even though I've written a book and, and uh, you know, we get a lot of visitors looking at our blog every day. Um, it's something that's an, uh, it's, a, it's not just an expression of personal interest, but I'm thinking about what kind of information can I write about in response to what it is that the audience needs that I'm after. You know, so I started simply expressing my, uh, using it as a bookmarking tool and then simply writing about things that I cared about. And then as I started to empathize and interact, and empathize with uh, audiences or people that I was trying to reach, and I started to understand what they were interested in, and I started to pay attention to the web analytics and what was working and what was not, I started to use all those information sources to inform my subsequent editorial. So now I have other people like Ashley Zekman, for example, who's helping me blog on our blog. In fact, she writes more often than I do now, and many of her posts are far more successful than mine. And I'm, I'm ecstatic about that because you know, having her, she came in not being a blogger, and I shared with her some of the things that I had learned, and now she's not only learned that, but she's also added her own spin to it. And I think when you're a new blogger, you've got to look at what is it that you're interested in, what is it that other people are doing that's successful, and try and use that as a way to learn, but then you need to make it your own. And if you stick to it, and you really are listening and reacting to people in a genuine way, you'll have all the success you'll ever want. So like any website if that's using a content management system, uh, especially something that's open source, if you're not updating, um, you, you know, you're going to, there will be vulnerabilities, there will be um, secure, potential security risks because that's what people are doing out there looking for opportunities is looking at uh, publishing platforms that have uh, an opportunity for exploit. Um, just like your Windows based computer, if you're not doing Microsoft Update, eventually you'll have a security um, issue because someone will find an exploit and they'll exploit it, right? So in the way that you update your own personal computer um, or anything else, you want to make sure you're updating WordPress with necessary platform updates as well as updates to any plugins. And also be, um, you know, be conservative about using um, you know, free-for-all templates, design templates, because they could have things hidden in them. Um, as far as plugins go, you know, make sure that they're coming from a reputable place um, because, again, if, if they create a plugin that doesn't maintain security, they don't provide updates that close any security gaps, that could put your entire blog at risk. So it's important to stay on top of that. Well, okay, so I've written a book. Um, it's been out about almost a month and a half now. It's called Optimize. And um, it's not necessarily about SEO, although there's lots of practical advice about um, optimization. It's about what the word optimize means, and that is a continuous process of making things better. I had a conversation with a Google engineer a couple years ago, uh, Miley Oye, who had uh, just gotten done giving a presentation, and I had seen her over the years really improve. And I said, you know, you're amazing. You're amazing how good um, your, uh, your speaking skills have really improved a lot. Clearly mine haven't, and, uh, and, and that's what I said to her. I said, I just kind of hacked my way through it, and people forgive me because I'm very passionate about what I'm talking about. And she said, well, you, you optimize web pages for better performance, don't you? Yeah. She said, why don't you optimize your speaking skills? And I thought, wow, not so much that I should improve my speaking skills, but that is really the way I should think of optimization. It's making better. You know, how are we making our marketing better? How are we making our ability to reach customers better? And not be so tied to something specific as SEO, social network, email, paid search, or whatever. And, and, and it really took it to heart. And I kind of took a step back and thought about optimization as a holistic view of how to do online marketing. So the book, 
is split up into three phases, three sections. The number one is about planning, how to do competitive research, how to do audits internally to make sure that you've got a good roadmap, a good strategy. The second phase is the biggest part of the book and it's soup to nuts tactics, all the way from customer segmentation and developing personas, keyword research, on-page optimization, SEO copywriting, social networking, link development, and metrics. And the third part is how to take all that and turn it into training in your company, how to develop processes, basically how to scale it in uh, to the rest of your company, how to have an optimized approach to not only marketing, but PR, customer service, and even recruiting. And you can find Optimize by searching on the word Optimize on Google or Bing, or you can just go to optimizebook.com.